Okay, so in the last lecture we have seen uh, some basic common characteristics of the fuels which are used for IC engines and in this lecture we are going to now work on uh, let us say uh, SI engine fuels that is the petrol engine and what are the characteristics or specific characteristics of petrol engine that is what we are going to do in this lecture. Okay. So, let us uh, begin with the uh, PowerPoint presentation here. So, the motor grade gasoline you know or, or what we call as petrol uh, is a term which is used to describe a complex mixture of various hydrocarbons refined from crude petroleum oil for use as a fuel in the engines uh, that is what we had discussed in the last class also. Uh, most gasoline are blended the, in the refineries uh, to meet the needs of the local climates and altitudes. So, as we have seen uh, low temperature uh, let us say uh, characteristics of the fuel or high temperature characteristics of the fuel uh, then depending on what type of conditions under which the fuel is going to be used. Uh, a certain amount of blending is required and that is what is done in the refineries. The major constituents if you see uh, as, uh, as you will recall the uh, most petrol uh, 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 let us say mixtures uh, uh, can contain up to about 250 to 400 different types of constituents uh, and uh, uh, the most common constituents are of course uh, normal paraffins, alkanes uh, for example, uh, isoparaffins or branched alkanes as you all know. Uh, olefins or alkenes uh, which are uh, unsaturated hydrocarbons, then aromats which are closed chain unsaturated compounds or cycloparaffins for example, in smaller amounts are present. Now, uh, since we know that the, the general formula for a hydrocarbon is uh, let us say uh, CnHm uh, where uh, uh, N and M represents the number of carbon atoms. So, if you typically see uh, let us say if you take a formula C8H15 which, which is uh, uh, on an average uh, which represents uh, let us say a gasoline uh, fuel. Uh, of course, uh, there are several several compounds which are present in, the, in, in petrol, but uh, if we represent it with an octane for example, uh, then uh, the carbon to uh, hydrogen to carbon ratio uh, will typically vary between 1.7 to 2 uh, in, in gasoline engines. Okay. And the boiling range of this particular mixture will be from let us say 35 degrees uh, 215 degrees. So, at low temperature also there are certain volatile compounds uh, which will evaporate that is what you also see in your uh, uh, in day to day experience when you when you use a vehicle for example, if it is parked in the in the sun uh, then a lot of petrol vapors are generated and these are the low temperature volatility uh, range. Uh, and of course, there are certain compounds which are longer chains of hydrocarbons uh, which will boil at a higher temperature. Uh, so, there is a there is a uh, there is uh, since it is a mixture uh, there is no unique uh, boiling point, but uh, this is usually done with a distillation curve. So, these are typical structures I do not have to uh, go deeper into the structure of these atoms, but you all know uh, methane for example, or ethane uh, which has two uh, carbon atoms and then it is a saturated uh, hydrocarbon with C2H6 for example, uh, or it can you can have isobutanes or normal butanes which are straight chains compounds like that uh, which are categorized as alkanes. Then you have aromats uh, which has a benzene ring structure like this, uh, uh, some phenyl groups uh, C6H5 uh, for example, uh, or aromatic compounds wherein you can have a branching uh, with the benzene ring uh, there you can have longer chains uh, also. Uh, so, they are uh, typically aromats uh, and then uh, uh, you can have olefins or alkanes for example, or cycloparaffins uh, uh, which, uh, which are represented uh, here for example, there are several varieties of uh, paraffins uh, which, which are present in, in a typical fuel mixture. Okay. And then of course, olefins and alkenes which are unsaturated, we have these double bonds for example, uh, in, in, in propene or ethene for example, C2H4 and C3H6. So, these are typical structures, uh, you have studied these structures in your organic chemistry courses. Uh, so, uh, uh, for us uh, as, as a, as a IC engine designer, uh, it, it, we, we, have to, we have to sort of understand that what we are burning is actually a mixture which contains uh, 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 let us say different percentages of, of these compounds and uh, typically about 250 to 400 such compounds are present in any given mixture which you actually go in a petrol pump to buy for example. There are different gasoline characteristics. So, we have seen some common fuel characteristics and now we will concentrate on petrol for example. So, the fuel which we are burning 
uh, is a major expense in the operation cost of the vehicle. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, a lot of research uh, is done to sort of understand the fuel characteristics and to make, uh, to, to add additives to it, to blend it, for example, uh, and uh, to increase the overall efficiency of the engine. So, we, we pay a lot of attention to the fuel because the combustion characteristics of the engine uh, depend on the type of fuel which we are using. Uh, the proper operation of the engine depends on clean fuel, of course, of proper octane rating. So, we will discuss octane rating in today's lecture also and also the vapor pressure for the engine to operate. And then there are standard testing methods which are specified and agreed worldwide to characterize major gasoline. Okay, for example, you have American standards or ISO standards uh, which are used throughout the world uh, because uh, 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 th there has to be a common standard so that we can benchmark uh, a particular fuel available at a particular location with that of uh, some other refinery, for example, and uh, to, 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 to compare multiple fuels, we will require uh, some sort of a standard. So, these standards are available. So, now let us see uh, what are the important gasoline characteristics. So, as I was telling you, uh, the, the gasoline is a mixture and so therefore, there is a, uh, there is a low volatility uh, compounds and medium volatility compounds and high volatility compounds. So, you have distillation range, uh, which is a very important parameter which will classify the fuel and its burning characteristics at the end. Then, uh, you would also like to check the pressure, the vapor pressure of this mixture Naturally, this is not a pure substance like water, for example, or, or alcohol, for example. If it was a pure substance, then there was a unique vapor pressure curve with respect to temperature, as you all, all know, uh, the, the properties of pure substances, for example. But here is a mixture. And therefore, at different temperatures, uh, the different volatile compounds will evaporate and there will be a common pressure which will be felt because of the mixture. And this is an important parameter. Uh, because it, it, it not only affects the transportation, but it, it also affects the way uh, the fuel vaporizes at the end and how much pressure it creates uh, during this process. So, the, not only storage, transportation, actual combustion dynamics all depends on the vapor pressure at different temperatures. Then, of course, the density as we have seen in the last class also uh, that the more the dense, the mass per unit volume will change and that will affect the storage, transportation and combustion dynamics. Then we also define the combustion characteristics through what is called as an octane number. So, very shortly I will describe you what is an octane number uh, and then there are two octane numbers. One is a research octane number and one is a motor octane number, usually called as RONS and MONS. Uh, so, I will, uh, I will discuss the difference between these two also. Of course, oxidation stability as we are talking about, then the gum content uh, because the existent gum, there are gummy substances, organic uh, large chain molecules uh, which will create, uh, let us say, some residual masses after burning inside the engine, for example, which are detrimental uh, for the engine life and its operation. So, these are typically specified as milligrams per 100 ml of petrol. Then, of course, lead. Uh, as you all know, lead is a poisonous substance. Over the years, there is a consistent effort to reduce the lead content in petrol. Uh, it used to be added to increase its com combustion characteristics, but naturally, the, from an emission perspective, uh, it is extremely detrimental and therefore, uh, over the years, uh, the lead percentage has now reduced to a very, very minimum uh, quantity. So, when we study the standards, uh, we will see uh, what are the existing standards for lead, for example. Then, as you all know, uh, it is not only pure hydrocarbon, but it has also sulfur in it many times. Also, nitrogen compounds are also added. Some amines can be added, for example. Uh, and therefore, sulfur is, is also not very good uh, because uh, sulfur creates sulfur dioxide uh, or uh, uh, other oxides of sulfur. Uh, and they, of course, uh, react with steam to uh, form also sulfuric acid, for example. Different classes of sulfur-based acids are formed uh, and they are detrimental not only for the engine, but also for the health uh, and the environment outside. Then benzene content, olefins, aromatics and oxygen content. Many of, uh, many of the fuels have oxygen. For example, if there is alcohol content inside the fuel itself, uh, then the stoichiometry as far as the supply of air is concerned can change. Uh, because you already have some oxygen already present in the fuel. If you forget this oxygen, which is already in the fuel, then the amount of air which you supply, if it is stoichiometric, uh, then naturally 
this oxygen also needs to be considered in the calculation uh, when you do let us say theoretical air requirement. So, this is important uh, and we will see uh, how uh, uh, quite a few modern fuels uh, have a substantial amount of oxygen in it. Uh, there are countries where uh, uh, the, the entire fuel uh, cycle is based on alcohols for example, like uh, ethanol for example. So, ethanol based fuels or ethanol blended fuels or ethanol as a fuel itself uh, will have naturally oxygen in, in it. So, uh, coming to the each, each uh, of, the, of the characteristics, so this is a very typical distillation curve. Okay. Uh, and in this distillation curve, we see uh, on the x axis is the percentage of the fuel which is evaporated. So, from 0 to 100 uh, and uh, uh, starting from 0 to 220 is the, is the temperature in degree Celsius. And as you can see, uh, the, the, from right from about 25, 35 to 40 degree centigrade, right up to 220 degree centigrade, uh, different let us say compounds or different constituents of the petrol will ev evaporate at different temperatures. And as you can see uh, the, at the low end or the low temperature range uh, about, uh, about from let us say from 40 to about 65, 70 degrees, about 20 percent of the constituent mixtures will evaporate. And uh, therefore, uh, this is what is called as the front end volatility. So, if, if the front end volatility is not there. Uh, you know, or, or too much of evaporation is there, for example, then high evaporation emissions, vapor locking can occur and poor starting can take place. And if this volatility is very, very low, then in cold climate, it will be very difficult to start the engine and therefore, you require certain amount of uh, front end volatility in, in, in the fuel. If you come to the mid range, uh, for example, uh, the, which is called as the mid range volatility, when uh, about uh, 60 percent of the total constituents, they will evaporate uh, within a temperature range of about from 80 to let us say about 160 or 150 degree centigrade. Uh, here what you see, uh, if the mid range volatility is low, uh, then carburetor icing can take place at ambient temperatures for example, or uh, if it increases, then of course, uh, you have higher HC emissions, poor warm up, poor acceleration, poor short trip economy. So, the essentially, the efficiency of the automobile strongly depends on at what temperature, how much percentage of the fuel is, uh, let us say, evaporating. Okay? And then eventually, of course, there are certain compounds which uh, about 20 percent of the compounds, their, their boiling point is pretty high uh, beyond 160, 170 degrees uh, and uh, they, they are responsible, uh, you know, uh, for the combustion chamber deposits or for, for example, higher emission characteristics of the engine uh, and of course, poor long term economy. So, uh, this particular distillation curve is a characteristic curve for each fuel, uh, let us say what we get okay? and uh, it is created by plotting the temperature at which the various percentage of fuel evaporates as I was telling you and heavier molecules will evaporate at higher temperatures. So, typically uh, in, in, a, in a petrol for example, the C10, C15 s or C18s, uh, you know those type of heavier molecules which are present, they will evaporate at higher temperatures and they will contain more energy also. Whereas, the lighter molecules evaporate easier and that is what is useful uh, for uh, let us say the low end volatility or the front end volatility which is good for, for starting the engine. So, uh, if you see uh, a typical fuel as per the ASTM standards. Uh, there is, how do you compare, uh, let us say, if you get data like that for two different fuels. Okay? So, how will you compare uh, two fuels? Uh, so, uh, ASTM defines what is called as a drivability index okay? and this drivability index is given by uh, 1.5 uh, T10. That means, uh, the, the temperature at which 10 percent of the fuel evaporates plus 3 times T50 plus T90. So, if you add these two then, and then you typically should get a figure uh, which is between 580 and 600. So, the commercial gasoline fuel which is available in the market uh, will have a drivability index of roughly between 580 to 600 and that is obtainable from the distillation curve of that particular fuel. So, naturally uh, the source at which these fuels are manufactured that is the, the, the refineries for example from where the fuel comes. Uh, the, the, the refineries will try to uh, make a blend in such a manner 
that it has a reasonable drivability index uh, so that uh, commercial automobiles can run at, at this particular uh, at this particular drivability index. So, uh, in this lecture, uh, we will take a break here. Uh, in the, uh, we have seen that uh, the gasoline is a mixture of many, many compounds of different compounds, organic compounds, hydrocarbons uh, with some sulfur, nitrogen and oxygen compounds also present and the distillation curve uh, of a particular fuel will tell you uh, what percentage of fuel will vaporize at different temperatures and this is a very important parameter uh, to judge and compare to fuels uh, which can be done by the drivability index. So, in the next lecture, we will see other characteristics of the petrol fuel.